Hey guys, it's Denise here, NOLA Collectibles, and welcome to my channel. Happy New Year, everyone. Ready to usher in 2021. And um, to recap for 2020, I wanted to do another top thrifted finds of the year video. So I did one of these last year. I think they're super fun. I mean, I love watching them on YouTube. And so I, I thought it was always a good opportunity to kind of go through some of the wins from the year, uh, from thrift stores, from ThreadUp, from you know, wherever we're sourcing shop goodwill, wherever we're sourcing our jewelry from. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Denise, NOLA Collectibles, and my channel's all about jewelry. So uh, thrift store unbaggings, thrift store hauls, thread up unboxings, shop goodwill unboxings, shop goodwill blue box, all that good stuff, all jewelry related. Uh, if you like that type of content, if you're a jewelry enthusiast, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I'm also a part-time reseller. I sell primarily on eBay at my store name there is NOLA Collectibles as well. So I'm going to get right into it because I know we don't like looking at blank space for too long. <laughs> I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to start with one of my most, I think, a most interesting piece and um, something I was really excited to acquire this year. And this is a Niger Brothers necklace. And so if you're not familiar with Niger brothers, they were from Czechoslovakia. They were two brothers, Max and Norbert Niger, and they made this gorgeous, gorgeous um, molded glass, beaded, elaborate, beautiful jewelry from 1905 to 1930. And so that time frame is very specific because um, during World War II, they relocated their business to Bo Bohemia, um, where, they, where they were seeking... Um, they were looking to get away from what was going on with Germany. And unfortunately, both Max and his brother Norbert were sent to Auschwitz um, where they where they died. So it's a, it's a moment in time that was very short and it makes this jewelry very collectible and it's extremely high quality jewelry. And so here is a really good example of something that is in the Egyptian revival motif which is very typical of Niger Brothers jewelry here you'll see it has the pharaoh and um you know this was a very popular theme and this was you know of course due to in 1922 when they first opened King Tut's tomb it created this huge moment of um you know just interest in Egyptian culture and we saw that across jewelry and we saw that across the styles of the time um across the architecture and interior design and all of those things so Again, this was this is really gorgeous here, and like I said, they like to incorporate kind of the this molded Czech glass that they're very known for. And so you can see here we have this pharaoh here, and um, it's very like I said, very well made type of jewelry here. You can see the back of it, and this one is on a cord. And uh, these beads, again, these kinds of beads up here at the top of the station here, very typical of Niger Brothers jewelry there. Um, so if you come across even glass beaded jewelry that has these types of beads like sarcophagus or, you know, tut or um, Cleopatra type looking molded glass, then, you know, it's possible that you have a Niger Brother piece. I mean, I will say it's not something that you encounter too, too much because it is old. And like I said, it was kind of like a moment, a very brief moment in time. And and also they didn't mark their jewelry. So, you know, it's not like they stamped their name across the back of it. Uh, you have to look for components, um, elements, the way things are made to help you to gauge whether or not you have a Niger Brothers piece. And so uh, I would say here, um, there's a Facebook group that is specializes in Niger, uh, Niger jewelry, identifying and collecting Niger jewelry. So I would say maybe go, if this might be something that you are interested in, go take a look and maybe become a member of that group. I think they're very helpful and there's a lot of experts on that page. It's a closed group. You just need to request access. And so this guy, I did actually buy this from a local estate sale. <laughs> And it was $5. And so I, you know, having been familiar with what I was, you know, with Niger Brothers and what to look for, I knew kind of immediately that this could be a Niger Brothers piece. Uh, so very exciting. And I think it's just absolutely stunning. I, I love this. You know, if I ever do have an opportunity to acquire more Niger Brothers, I would love to do so, but it's, it's very expensive. So like something like this um, probably would sell for about, you know, 250 to about $300. Um, and again, all due to the high quality, the beautiful artistry, the hand, you know, everything handmade. 
the rarity of it. Uh, so just, you know, so many of these things. You just listed a lot of Chinese motifs. So they have this beautiful enameling work showing traditional kind of Chinese motifs, boats, um, you know, cherry blossoms. And I mean, I would say to go Google it or go onto Pinterest and put in Niger Brothers and you'll see a huge variety of this jewelry come up and it's just absolutely stunning jewelry. So yeah, that was an exciting, oh, and they actually, when I checked out, the person was like, she's like, oh, I think that's like a tourism item that they might have gotten on one of their trips. So they thought it was like a cheap tourism item uh, when, it, <laughs> when it was actually a, a Niger Brothers piece of jewelry. So I thought that that was super, super, super exciting. So um, from there, I'm going to go to, I think, this brooch right here. And this is a 14 karat gold, um, you know, vintage brooch. And this one has uh, rubies and some golden citrines. And it's really beautiful. It's quite a substantial piece. And this was a piece of jewelry that did come out of a shop Goodwill lot that I had purchased earlier in uh, 2019. So I want to say maybe like February right around February or March. And so, you know, you can see here, it's a really beautiful piece. It does have a Mark 14 hair gold on it, and it has the little extended pin right there and a lovely open back setting on the stones, allowing the light to really get into those citrines and, and, and make them really just look absolutely beautiful. Nice, warm, goldeny citrine color on those stones and um, some really pretty uh, little rubies in there too. So that was like a really great kind of like little find for me again coming from Shop Goodwill. That was a, a lot that I had purchased on Shop Goodwill. Um, I'm gonna go over here and then so this was something that had come out of a thread up box. So from you know sourcing out of state sales, sourcing on Shop Goodwill and then to kind of sourcing through ThreadUp. The thread up I had gotten a thread up DIY box and um, I think it came from California. California. I don't remember where it had come from, but it was filled with some really beautiful high quality items. It was like a lot of Amrita Singh earrings and just expensive kind of pieces of jewelry. There was Tiffany's in there, authentic Tiffany's. So there was a, it was a great little like lot of jewelry that has some very high quality items, a pair of 14 karat gold earrings was in there. So this was in there as, as well. And so this, what we have here is this ended up being eight. This is 18 karat gold, and we have this beautiful mabe pearl down here, and strung with there's diamond accents here, strung on a cultured, beautiful cultured pearl necklace here. Beautiful high luster. It's got this very fancy, heavy, and substantial um, clasp here as well. And so this guy is beautiful. And then again, because it is 18 karat gold, and we have some of these elements like the diamonds and the mabe pearl and the cultured pearl all um, nicely made, high, high quality. It is also um, from Italy. It's stamped Italy on it. And so I did have this, went to my jeweler and got, he kind of like gave me a range of about uh, 2,400, 25, something like right on the 23 to like 2,500 on value for this particular item. So this was something that came out of a thread up box. So that was obviously you know, a very, very good score. And this is why we keep going back to thread up. I haven't been able to get a thread up box. Uh, they're just like, I, I get the, um, you know, the 15 piece ones, you know, which used to be like 30 pieces and but then it went to 24 pieces. Now it's 15 pieces, but um, the DIY boxes are so hard to come by. I haven't been able to get one in a very long time. Um, so let's see, where should we go from here? Let's go to, let's go to this. And you guys might remember a lot of these pieces that, um, you know, I did do like thrift store hauls or I found while I was unboxing and, and had on some older videos. And so this piece right here, this did come from my local thrift store. And, um, you know, I like to go regularly to my, my local thrift store and they have jewelry that's either hanging from a pegboard, like a wall that you can just sort through. And then they have jewelry that's behind the counter. And so I usually go and hit all the pegboard jewelry first and just really scour through that to see what they've got. And then I go over to the counter. So where the pegboard is, since it's all hanging on spikes, uh, they have a big Tupperware container underneath it to, to catch everything because everyone makes a mess and it falls everywhere. So I also go through the Tupperware container. So this was at the bottom of the Tupperware container. It was heavily, heavily tarnished. And I, I was, I brought my magnet with me and I just, you know, tested it with the magnet. I'm like, okay, it's sterling silver. I didn't, I didn't buy this with the assumption that this was a David Yerman piece. 
Um, <laughs> it rarely is David Yerman. I bought it because I'm like, it's very good looking bracelet and it's sterling. Great. So I bought it and it was $2.99. And so when I got home and I cleaned it up, I polished it up, it polished up really nice. And I started to take a closer look at it. I noticed under my loop, I noticed that it had the, uh, the DY David Yerman signature uh, uh, right on the end caps of the bracelet there. Um, kind of like right here right here at the bottom down here on the end cap. I tested the diamonds and those tested as diamonds. And, and then this is Calcedony. So I, I did a little research and I was able to find this style. And so um, got also took this to the jeweler um, and confirmed that this was in fact authentic David Yerman. So wonderful piece of jewelry there. I still haven't decided what I want to do with it. If I want to sell it or if I want to keep it. Um, this was the first thrifted piece of David Yerman that I had found. So again, not sure what I really want to do with it. It's a really pretty bracelet. It looks great on. Um, and I love Chalcedony. So I don't know. Um, that, rem you know, remains to be seen what I, you know, I mean, but that's a great part of thrifting, right? I mean, you could keep it for a while, you can wear it, and then you can set it free, and you can sell it, and you have great value on a beautiful item that's authentic. So something like this, I saw prices kind of between four and $500 on the David Yerman bracelet. So let's try to make this a little bit prettier um, so we can see all of the jewels and whatnot. Okay. So then I'm going to go now to a ring. I have a few rings that I've managed to find this year that I really do love. And so this one I did again get at a local estate sale. And this is a really beautiful smoky quartz ring. And um, this guy, I don't, you know, I don't think that they knew what its value was. And, and this is what it is when you go kind of thrifting or you go to estate sales or you're you find things that are mixed in with costume jewelry because you know people just don't know any better. So this is was mixed in with a whole bunch of costume jewelry pieces, um, and it's really fabulous. And so this guy, you know, has a beautiful like kind of high setting, kind of Art Deco looking, and um, open on the back as well because this is a very substantial sized um, smoky smoky topaz here it's nicely cut beautiful facets on it and this is 14 karat gold so i think i paid i want to say maybe like eight or ten dollars for this one and you know <laughs> i get so excited when i find these things and it, it like garage sales or like estate sales and then you just kind of like run you run to go pay because you're like i need to get those before they realize but they're not going to realize or i don't know you just feel so lucky to find things like this and you get so excited you get that kind of shoppers high that thrift high uh, anyway, so yeah, this was again a really beautiful kind of find and um, just really large, substantial, great looking, beautifully cut um, and just, uh, you know, very different. And so that was, I think, an awesome little find as well. And I'm going to go do another ring or let's do this little brooch. This also came out of a shop Goodwill um, bag that I had purchased online and this is a really pretty little 14 karat gold wishbone brooch with a beautiful little cultured pearl on it and so this was a really nice little surprise and again um, I feel like we're seeing less and less gold and precious metals in the shop Goodwill uh, jewelry lots and it's so funny I'm part of Margaret's Texas Gala jewelry lovers group online and the group was re recently like infiltrated by a shop Goodwill employee <laughs> She just kind of like dipped in and someone um, someone was talking about the quality of items of a lot that they had purchased. And I said, I just am getting the impression that they're better at sorting. Like there's been some kind of improvement in the sorting process. And, you know, we're seeing kind of like more costume jewelry and, and less precious metals in a lot of the bags. She, she was like, yep. She kind of confirmed it. She was like, your feeling is accurate. She didn't elaborate. <laughs> Uh, but she did kind of confirm that, you know, they apparently are, are putting better processes in place just to sort through the jewelry that they're selling. Um, but this was, again, I want to say this was earlier in the year, like maybe February or March. And I, and it's, I think it's just a sweet little vintage, you know, wishbone brooch here. And this one marked right on the back, 14 karat. So, and you can see there, um, I think it's Carl Art. Yeah, it's a CA with the arrow through it is the logo called Carl Art, I believe is the brand if my memory is serving me correctly, but I think that's it. So yeah, just a beautiful, really pretty, just delicate wishbone pendant with the pearl on it, lovely little pearl on it. 
And I think now I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to this item. And this item is kind of like less about the value of it. Um, although it is valuable and just more about, I think it's beautiful. I think it's a beautiful item. This is a Victorian uh, amethyst glass intaglio, intaglio um, with an intaglio pendant here. And you'll see it has just this wo beautiful woman here. She's um, looks like she could be like a Roman goddess. And on this, it's molded glass, just really beautiful brass kind of, you know, interlinked here which looks like rosary style. It's very, very long and I just love it. I think it's a beautiful piece. And this one came out of a local thrift store bag that I pay $40 for and was just hanging out at the bottom of the bag. And so, you know, you hear me say these types of things all the time. I'm always shocked when I counter pieces like this because they're so delicate. And to think about how old something like this is and the fact that it remained intact, it, you know, just makes you feel lucky. Again, you get, you get a little little hit of that dopamine, <laughs> that thrifting high when you find stuff like this. And so um, I have seen something like this sell similarly for about like $200 or so, um, looking kind of look, looking at past solds on eBay and also on Worth Point just to get a sense of what something like this was would be going for. But I actually didn't find necklaces. I found rings um, or just the pendant alone. So, and all of them were... Um, saying that it was a Victorian piece across the board. There weren't a ton of them. There was, I think I found like three or four. So yeah, that's, I thought was like a really gorgeous and unusual find and a very lucky find that came out of one of my uh, local thrift store jewelry bags that I do on baggings of throughout the year. So um, let's go, let's keep going. I'm gonna go with something that's very recent that I just found like two days ago. Just a nice way to close out the year, I thought. Again, again, coming from my local thrift store, I bought a jewelry bag a couple of days ago, about <clears throat> three days ago, right before the um, new year, and it $40, and in there was like just this really pretty pair of 14 karat gold diamond earrings. And so these are kind of like, you can see they're like huggies, and they have um, elongated little baguettes right there. Um, so I think something like this probably looks like about a quarter of a carat worth of diamonds. And they're actually very nice looking diamonds. I looked at them under the loop. They have really lovely clarity, which they do have to have if you're going to do a baguette cut because, uh, you know, the baguette cut is something that has a lot of facets, so does typically require a hot, higher quality diamond uh, to create. So. Then you see here two-tone, it's got these like kind of little X's on it. Very, very sweet. You know, not, these are not huge, but they're very nicely made. Um, nice high quality earrings. And I was excited because I actually, f I found one and you know the feeling where you're like, I hope this other one is in here. I hope the second one is in here. And so the second one was in there and I did find it. So that was really exciting. So I haven't been able to go to a jeweler yet to get a sense of the of what these might be worth, but I did look online um, just to kind of see what they might be going for. So next, uh, I'll go to another ring because why not we're here? And this was also kind of a late in the year um, acquisition of mine. My local Goodwill store recently underwent a um, a makeover, and so they gave the, they remodeled the entire store. We, our good, Goodwills down here are not very good. <laughs> They're usually very small, and they don't have a lot of merchandise. Uh, but this was a larger location, so they they did a whole remodel of the store, and they have way more jewelry now, which is very exciting. And it's just way more vintage hard goods, glassware, all of that stuff. So it's really looking great. And so I went a couple of days after the grand opening, reopening, because I figured that they would be like fully stocked. And they definitely were. So uh, I bought a whole bunch of items. I got really good prices and really fabulous sterling pieces. And uh, I lo was looking, they have all these et um, etagers in there. And I was looking and they had this, this ring, little ring hanging out uh, with a price tag of $10 on it. And so I asked to see this and I could see that to me it did look like gold, but I could see there was no, no marking on it. And I was unsure of the stone because it is a really nice size stone. It looks like it's about a two carat size stone or so. 
and it's in this really sweet kind of like buttercup setting you can see here which is a really nice vintage setting and um, you know what's nice about this uh, you can see again since it is a beautiful stone it's all open which just again allows the light to go through and gives it just a wonderful brilliance um, so nice size and I'm like this is well made definitely looks like gold and so I, I picked that guy up and yes it did test as 14 karat gold and the stone is it's a pink sapphire and so I do have some pink sapphire jewelry I will say that this one is is pretty exceptional it's a very large size and um, it is also a really nice color pink I'm trying to focus here because see we have all the stuff out okay there we go it's a really nice color pink it's got a warmth uh, to it. And so, you know, colored sapphires are very rare and, and they do tend to sell very well. So yellow and pink sapphire, Ceylon sapphires, which is kind of like that non-traditional blue, not the navy blue sapphire, but more of like an oceany blue color. Um, yeah, so I got this guy. This was a wonderful little score uh, from my local Goodwill store. And this was a very recent kind of acquisition. So adding that guy, really beautiful. I love that little ring quite a lot. I wish it fit me though, but it's like a size four. It's like teeny, teeny, tiny, which is why I think it doesn't have, that's probably why it doesn't have the um, gold purity on it. Cause it probably got cut off if it was resized, but look how gorgeous that is. Oh, it looks good with these rings, all the pinks. That is like candy. So pretty. Okay. So anyway, we're going to move on to the next item. And the next item I did want to mention as a score is just um, gold items. And so this one, again, this was actually a recent kind of find for me. And this one came out of a shop Goodwill, uh, not a shop Goodwill, a Goodwill blue box. So the boxes, the DIY boxes that they do for $29.99. And this item, it came flying out of the box immediately. And this is a 14 karat gold. It's marked 585 European gold bracelet here with the double safety clasp as soon as I saw it I got so excited because I saw the double safety clasp which just like look like gold to me and and it is so and and what's great about this one is though it's not just gold this is over this is like 23 24 grams of gold so it's very heavy it's also very long it's over eight inches in length so uh the value of gold right there is huge because gold is extremely high right now I think it's going for something like 19 almost 1900 dollars an ounce so now is a good time to sell your scrap gold or even if you have broken or unwanted jewelry now is the time to sell it and um you know typically with recessions when the country's going through a recession or like a downturn in the economy the commodities are always raised always go high so you know last time gold was really high it was right like 2008 2009 like super super like record levels never before seen and so we're kind of approaching those levels again with the price of gold so I, and I sold I sold directly to a refinery so I hoard up all my scrap and, and my gold and um, I end up just sending it to a refinery I, I use Midwest refineries uh, so because it's, I get much more payout if, if I were to then take it to like a, a pawn shop. Pawn shops usually take sometimes like a, almost a 30% cut of what you have. So I think I get 90 or 95%. I just send it directly to the refinery. And so uh, it ends up adding up quite a bit. It really makes a big difference. And, and so, yeah, just pack it up and I ship it out. I put insurance on it and it goes direct to the refinery and I get a check like in a week usually. So yeah, this one came out of a blue box. Um, it was a great, great find. I want to say that one was in a New Jersey location. So that was a beautiful and a couple that was just from a couple of weeks ago. Beautiful bracelet from there. And this one also was from a shop Goodwill. Blue, uh, shop Goodwill. I keep saying that. Goodwill blue box. And this is, again, just another gold bracelet here. Really, really nice. Again, with the safety class, 14 karat gold. So we got that guy. And this one came out of my local thrift store and this is just like a sampling of a few pieces you know I do get quite a bit of scrap gold or even just regular nice ready to wear pieces that can be sold or, or worn you know whatever you decide to do and this one came out of a local thrift store and this is just pretty with the with the gold leaves and it has a two-tone it has some rose gold in it as well and so got that one too and so from there I'm gonna go back to uh, rings this was an item that I picked up uh, this came out of a thread up box and again I, I just had good luck with the thread up boxes this year 
the few that I was able to get. <laughs> and this came flying out and it was so unusual. I'm always surprised when I get vintage pieces out of thread up boxes that I never know how they end up there. But this guy came flying out of a box and uh, this is, you can see it's a very interesting kind of cut and it is marked Strel. 14 karat Strel S T R E L L and Strel is actually a brand called Strelmans and they were based in Oregon and they specialized and actually patented the cut of the stone. So you see here it's a very weird kind of um, looking cut and it ha but it has these very like long lengthwise facets across the top of it and uh, this is called the Lighthouse Lens Cut that Strelmans um, had basically in patented and uh the reason it is gorgeous and like i said very highly faceted and they requ it requires a quite a bit of rough to create this cut i think they have a, a stat on their site it's like 125 carats of rough just to create kind of like a 10 carat stone <clears throat> so just again you know these are fancy cuts they require a lot of rough and so a beautiful setting as well and this does look like this is a spinel and strel strelman's is a brand it's been around since 1948, it's still in operation. This became, it did become very popular kind of in the mid-century. And this setting does to me look very mid-century. And you can t you see with the two prongs right there to hold that stone in. So that was a really beautiful, fabulous find. And again, this stone unfortunately is like a smaller size. So I cannot, it's not something I can wear, but I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I mean, you talk about like resizing jewelry and, you know, you can re you know, resize rings up to a certain point uh, until you impact the setting and the setting becomes compromised. So, yeah, it is what it is. Um, so, yeah, so finally, again, another piece, and I think that this actually might have been even in the same box that I just, just wanted to touch on really quick was this piece right here also out of a thread up box and this is just a beautiful carved jade necklace and i knew kind of when it came out it just looked gorgeous and it, it, it is carved jade and i've i've done some research on it it looks like it's probably from the 1920s and the 1930s similar styles and this guy unfortunately this component right here is made out of ivory so this is carved ivory and and due to that you can see the Schrager lines on it, which is the cross hatching that is uh, typical to ivory. Because of that, this is not a piece that I would be able to resell. Unless I, you know, you can't resell ivory unless you have proper documentation that the item was obtained pre-ban. So I don't have that. So, it, you know, it is a piece that um, I'll have to keep for, I'll keep for myself. Uh, I do think, like I said, I, despite the fact that it does have these, these ivory components, I do think this is um, a pretty phenomenal necklace. And the ones that I did see had the same component, but also in jade, not in the ivory. And like I said, those are selling for about $1,000 to about $1,200. So yeah, guys, that's everything. These were just some of the highlights of some of the fabulous finds that I thrifted over the course of 2020. It's so funny. I was like thinking I said 2019. Of course, I'm going to be writing the wrong year for the next three months. I'm sure everybody is. <laughs> I got to get used to that 2021, um, just like everyone else. So these are some of the fabulous finds that I thrifted throughout the course of the year for 2020. And like I said, uh, this was a lot of sourcing from estate sales. Some were from thread up boxes. Some were from my local estates, uh, were from my local thrift store, either purchased in store or found through one of their bags that I get there for $40. And I think it was a really fun year. And I think, you know, this is really exciting to me. And it, it you know, just keeps me, keeps me motivated to keep going and doing, you know, doing this some more, which, you know, this, the bling, it's all about the bling, right? You know, this is what we, we hope to fine when we go treasure hunting it's like modern day treasure hunting so yeah I, I so appreciate you guys tuning in and staying with me and hanging with me to, to let me show you some of my fun finds for the year and let me know what you think if you have a favorite piece or you know tell me what your good scores were for the year I always love hearing about everybody else's jewelry scores uh, because me throw as well so tell me your top jewelry finds for 2020 so that we can um you know, talk about some positive things that occurred. <laughs> and uh, yeah, leave me a comment, you guys. Give me a thumbs up on the way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you at the next one. Bye.